In a world gone mad, this is the greatest madness of all. One soldier against the ultimate defense system ever devised. One warrior against legions of robots capable of destroying entire cities. One human against the Cybercon. In a makeshift workshop scrapped out of a bomb crater in the Rockies, technicians are hurrying to make last minute preparations. At the center of their activity is a huge armored suit, the top half suspended from a gantry, while the powerful legs are given last minute adjustments. There is so little time. Beside the Iron Giant, the best and most decorated warrior in the Union waits to be lowered in. With a tight-fitted harness, the pilot is hoisted into the armor's legs. A cybernetic helmet encircles the brow, connected to the controls. This is a volunteer mission, and soon it will begin. The mission begins. Inside the suit, that will be the world's salvation, or the warrior's tomb. It's time to face up to Cybercon. Bombs, tanks, and missiles failed to destroy it. Now there is only one knight in armor and one chance to find the weak spot and take it out. You are the volunteer. Prepare to enter Cybercom 3. This is a video demonstration on how to play Cybercon 3, a complete virtual reality inside your computer. Use this tape as an exclusive guide with hints and tips on defeating the supreme defense computer gone rampant. With these instructions, you will learn to operate your power armor, enabling you to explore the underground labyrinth of over 400 unique halls and chambers. Engage defense robots and turrets along sinister walkways in explosive combat. Become proficient in the multi-purpose Sonic Key to take lift rides up mind-bogglingly tall towers or extend a bridge across a cyber canyon. Upgrade your suit with energy banks, fusion power cells, remote surveillance, missile launchers, and more. Download key codes to grant access to higher restricted areas. If you are lucky, you will discover scattered parts of the master key locked up in high security vaults. Cybercon 3 is always evolving and will be studying your every move. Keep on your guard, the AI will try to stop you by constructing and dispatching a rival assassin when you least expect. Seek out and destroy the central brain stem. Have a seat at your battle station, it's time to take the helm. Cybercon 3 requires keyboard and joystick peripherals for control on the Atari ST and Commodore Business Machines Amiga. However, if you're using an IBM personal computer and compatibles, you may want to use a keyboard with an optional joystick. Under the guise of a technician, you will be admitted through a special force field entrance on the side of Mount Adam. Once inside, you will need to watch your footing. There are no safety rails. To move the power armor forward and backwards, press forward and backwards on the joystick. Pushing the joystick right or left turns the power armor clockwise and anti-clockwise. But for the IBM keyboard, Press the Q key to move forward and the A key to move backwards. 
Press the letter P to move clockwise and the letter O to move anti-clockwise. By pressing the fire button and moving left or right simultaneously, the power armor can be made to shuffle side to side. Simultaneously, press the fire button and operate the joystick or keys to tilt the power armor's head. Press forward to look down, hold back to look up. If the power armor sensors are online, the pitch indicator shows the altitude of the helmet and the compass shows the orientation of the armor. Cybercon 3 has an integral software copy protection routine. At various points of the game, including soon after the beginning, the player must pass a security check to proceed further in the game. When you interrogate certain doors in the complex with the F9 key, a four-part alphanumeric code appears on a black panel beside the door. The first two letters or numbers refer to the outer banks of the code wheel supplied with the game. Line these up, first letter or digit on the outer wheel, second letter or digit on the inner wheel. The two digit number below tells you which window on the code wheel to refer to. Type in the letter or number you find there. For each correct answer, you're given a sonic key icon for that door. You require three correct answers. Press return to activate the three icon sequence and open the door. The game can now proceed. You are free to enter the complex through the secret maintenance entrance. Let's get familiar with the interface of your Modified Maintenance Exoskeleton, or MES. There are several primary instruments and displays to master. To the layman, they are the Inventory, Systems, Power, and 3D Gauges. Let's start at the top and work our way around the cockpit. The inventory, or the icon strip display, is a 16-slot item selector for the cellular backpack of the MES. An alternate mode allows you to select sonic key codes available from onboard memory. Use the less than and greater than angle brackets on your keyboard to scroll through the icons. Move within range of your magnetic tractor beam until you see the item flashing in an empty inventory slot. While locked on, press the space bar and add it to your collection. The primary management system controls the power armor's five main functions. The left and right cursor keys select the system. Up cursor key toggles the selected system on and offline. The first system is the MES Power Assist. Online, this gives the pilot better control over the armor and access to the power jump function and power assisted landing. More energy allocated to power assist will greatly enhance the movement speed. The second system is the defense field, which can absorb damage from hostile fire. This is the power armor's shield and it effectively dissipates incoming plasma attacks, greatly reducing their impact. However, the power drain is considerable and it's not recommended the shield be powered up except in confrontational situations. The third system controls the status of various secondary systems, including the energy transfer probe, weapons, and the sonic key, selectable with the one and seven key on the numpad. The fourth system is the auto repair, which if placed online repairs damaged systems the status of individual systems can be ascertained through the status bars beneath the system's icons. Again, 
Use the left and right cursor keys to select the system, plus the down cursor key to place that system in the auto repair net. Power allocated to the auto repair is shared equally between selected damaged systems. The fifth system controls the sensors for a minimal power consumption. If placed online, the ring indicator acts as a Doppler detector with a 360 degree sweep. Targets are indicated by a green blip. The ring indicates power allocated for jumping. Press and hold the F10 key to charge the suit for a calculated bound in the direction of your choice. Alternatively, while moving, press and hold fire and release it to make a running leap. Your primary weapon is mounted on a pod beside the helmet visor and fires directly forward. Press fire to operate the weapon when selected. The superheated ball of energy launched by the projector draw on the armor's power supply. The more energy banks online and allocated to the plasma projector, the more powerful this weapon becomes. The size and hue will indicate the power of the plasma. Be wary of splash damage at close range. Try allocating less power to the plasma projector for utility as a precision weapon to dismantle but not completely destroy robots. Critically damaged robots throw out undamaged systems and parts for recovery and recycling. This may be of considerable benefit to the volunteer since robots usually discard fuel cells as a priority. Next we have a vacant secondary system that can be used as a secondary weapon slot or for another found device. The first applicable device picked up will be loaded into the slot automatically. The third unit down is the Energy Transfer Probe, or ETP. If the ETP is selected and online, it flashes when brought into proximity with the system with which it can interact. The ETP can drain power from fuel cells to an online energy bank. It can also provide power to start up field generators and other systems. The fourth and final unit is the Sonic Key. If this is selected and brought online, it alters the icon strip display to show the Sonic codes currently stored in memory. The Sonic Key displayed to the right of the inventory is a 1 to 3 icon parser that is used to interface with the fortress doors, elevators, kiosks, and more. Enter Sonic Keys from the icon strip display with the spacebar and then press fire or return to play the code selected. If the secondary system sonic key light is flashing, press F9 or fire to interrogate devices to automatically discover usable combinations. Should your power armor not know a relevant code, interrogation will be unsuccessful. However, some systems can give the volunteer extra codes, which can be used from then on. The energy bank indicators show the current reserves in the power armor's integral matrix and any supplemental energy banks. If the bar is red, the bank has a finite energy reserve that can be refilled from fuel cells or recharge stations. If it's green, the bank is powered by a small fusion reactor which has effectively limitless power, although it takes time to recharge. If you discover an energy bank in the complex, they look like rectangular columns. You can use it as a supplemental power plant by placing it in the backpack. It automatically fills one of the vacant energy bank slots. Toggle the four supplemental batteries on and offline by using the F1 through F4 keys. The more banks online, the more power is available for the power armor systems with green lights. Power is always shared equally between online systems. Power down your suit to avoid detection. 
with your systems offline, stand completely still and you may be ignored by passing sentries. Wait until the coast is clear to start moving. Beware of traps. You can input commands in the sonic key to preemptively discover trap doors and secret entrances. The red spheroid fuel cells can be used for energy transfers, but see what happens when you lob one into the pathway of a robot. The sonic key can be used to activate a power cell creating a large explosion. Use the same sonic key at a distance to detonate power cells as a remote bomb. Stand clear. When you find the secondary weapon, try using a power cell from your inventory as a missile. Make sure you put some distance between you and your target before testing it out. You can make an energy transfer to a force field generator to beef up its strength. This will use the battery power from the suit's reserve, so make sure you have some fuel to spare. Select the ETP from the secondary systems tab, then press and hold fire until the shield is topped off. Now interrogate the force field generator to activate it. The result is a much stronger shield that will disperse plasma. Try placing it in front of a robot assembly door marked by the chevron. Jumping from platform to platform may be necessary in the cyber jungle. If you misjudge your jump, don't despair. Your power armor comes with mid-jump course correction. If you overshoot your target, pull back on the joystick to make a safe landing. If you encounter a super robot, you may need to send all power to your plasma projector, creating the almighty white plasma ball. Watch out for the blast damage, which could be fatal to you and your rig. The parrot camera is an invaluable tool. If used carefully, it makes an excellent scout. Press 9 and 3 on the number pad to cycle through displays and control modes for the camera. Mode 2 is Reception Mode. If the sensor array primary management system is online, pictures from the camera which have been placed can be viewed. Up to four cameras can be monitored. The active camera is selected using the 1 and 7 keys on the number pad. Mode 3 operates in much the same way, but it allows the joystick to be used to control the camera. Press F5 for a full screen point of view from the camera. Cybercon 3 will not go down without a fight. Intel suggests that the supercomputer escalates its defenses relative to the impact of the aggressor. Cybercon may replicate your imposed threat by building a nemesis of equal ability to assassinate you. Keep on your guard for the annihilator robot which will hunt you down like a virus and try to purge you from the complex. Communication rooms are your only means of contact with the outside world. Use them whenever you can. You never know when you might run into something lethal around the next corner. Treat them just like a save game option in one of those 20th century computer games. We might be able to pick up from where you left off last. There are few maps for the inside of the complex, but that shouldn't stop you from grabbing a pen and paper. Every room has a corresponding number. Press 8 to display the room ID. This may be useful for some kind of topographic cartography. After the nuclear cataclysm and robot takeover, we've studied how they tend to build their fortresses. You will need four green sonic keys downloaded from terminals in order to gain access to four distinct zones. The green square clearance code is usually accessible on a lower level and has the lowest clearance. 
Seek out the green square first. From there you will need sonic keys in this order. Green triangle, green circle, and green hourglass. Each zone contains one green code and also contains one puzzle component in a vaulted room, often hidden. These safes contain four parts of a mysterious item. Once you attain all four parts, seek out and dismantle the central nervous system and save what remains of humankind.